big weekend it was for Arsenal, Dan. Big. Yep. Yep. You smashed up West Ham. You showed that, you know, over-celebrating and taking pictures of your photographer didn't make you complacent. And it seems to have rattled rivals. Yeah, big time, man. Big time. I don't know why it does. Um, Because we ain't winning nothing. We're not good enough. And uh, Man City are winning everything. So why is everyone so rattled then? I don't get it. Um, surely Arsenal are uh, the ones that are going to be laughing, laughed at, at the end of the season and it's all going to come crumbling down. So why are people so rattled, man? Chill out. It's all going to go wrong for us. Um, I still think we won't win the league. I still don't think we'll win the Champions League. So I'm kind of thought the fan base were with me and thought that Arsenal were going to probably finish second or third and win nothing this season. But maybe um, people are starting to be worried now. Otherwise, why the hell would they be so rattled? I don't get it. Um, it's like let's who's, all rattled, man? who's rattled everyone, it seems. I don't know, opposition fans, media. Let's all gather around the fire for it. Let's all look at how Arsenal are going to crumble in February. They're going to lose to Liverpool. <laughs> Make sure everyone's there. Don't miss it. Oh, they won. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. Man, you're going to win the league. Oh, they oh, they take pictures for them. And it's like, wow, this has really rattled them. And then we go to West Ham. Let's come and watch this game. Let's watch Arsenal slip up here. They lost to them last time. Everyone, make sure you're watching. 6-0. It don't matter anyway, man. So you're going to win the league. You can't bloody win. I'm like, what's going on? Okay. Just keep getting rattled then. Hopefully, people continue to keep getting rattled. I don't really get it. Um, Arsenal, I think, will fall off from the title. Arsenal will not win the Champions League. That is my honest opinion. I hope we win both. I hope we win one. And I hope we put everybody in the mud. But I don't really get it. Whenever it's Arsenal, it's piled on. I know why it is. Because we have a fan base that rattles everybody. We have a deluded, toxically positive fan base that rattles everybody that become a nuisance. That is why it is. That is just pure facts. And that's coming from an Arsenal fan. So the minute that we see everybody on Twitter, everyone loses their heads because people like Igao and Bavs and all the other guys that are really positive about Arsenal get on everyone's tits. That is why it is. <laughs> that is literally why it is. So people can say, why are Arsenal getting this? That's why it is. So you get some of the other balanced opinions of Arsenal. They're actually quite... Suffer, like you can suffer that and say fair play to you. <clears throat> but there are a section of the fan base that are extremely annoying to opposition fans and they start rubbing in people's faces. So then they go quiet and go, oh, Christ, I can't shut them up now. They just battered West Ham 6-0. Oh, my God, they've battered Liverpool 3 well, What the hell is we going to do? It's ruined our whole weekend. Oh, my God. Whereas, let's be real, why is it? Why is it ruined people's weekends? It's mad, it's mad to me. Man City is sitting there chilling. Well, I don't care. Arsenal won 6 0. What does it mean to them? What is it? What does it matter that Arsenal beat Liverpool 3 1 to Man City fans? It's probably a good result for them because apparently Liverpool are more of a threat than Arsenal. So City are cool. Do you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. It's very, very bizarre to me. I don't understand why it happens. Um, and by the way, I love Babs and Egal, by the way, before everyone in the chat starts saying I hate them because I don't. Um, I, I do a lot of content with both of them and speak to them very, a, a lot. But when I look at it, I just think it's a bit extreme about all of this. Oh, my God, look at Arsenal getting excited again. <laughs> Man, we, let us celebrate. We won 3-1. We won 6-0. It was two good results. And I will say, Mikel Arteta, tactically, in the last two games, has really impressed a lot of Arsenal fans and a lot of opposition fans. But they just don't want to say it. They don't want to hear it for Arsenal. I just think there's a lot of, let's pile on Arsenal. And when they can't pile on, they get rattled. Why? Sort your own team out, man. Don't worry about us. Leave us. But that's just the way I see it, bro. And it might be different because I'm an Arsenal fan. It might be different for opposition fans. LB can sit there quite comfortably and confidently and say it doesn't bother me because he's never thought Arsenal were, were serious to, to be able to get in front of Man City. But there are some fans, and I sit there and I think, wait, go and go and watch EastEnders then if you don't want to watch Arsenal beating us 6-0, like, you know, beating West Ham 6-0. Like go and do something else. Don't get rattled. Sit. I'm not rattled. I'm not rattled. But you'll sit on social media for three hours or on a podcast for three hours saying how Arsenal are not serious. It will come breaking down. Mate, go back and support your team. We don't need to hear about your absolute rants. It's rather embarrassing. But the best bit, the club the, you want, man. The, the funniest bit of analysis that I saw the other day was when everybody was saying that Arteta's got to be sacked if he can't beat Pep for this league title this year. And an Arsenal fan super chatted in, saying, OK, but why is it that our Arsenal fans have to demand that Arteta gets sacked if he doesn't beat Pep to the title this year? But no other, no other, none of the other 18 clubs should demand that their manager sack for not beating Pep to the title this year. And I just thought it just changed my outlook again. I thought that's such an interesting point. And I get that every, contextually, the context is the word that some people will use. Post Coglu's at a different stage. Man United situation is different. But equally, 
Arsenal can still apply context. You're up against one of the greatest English teams of all time who are the favourites. I've heard pundits turn around and say, yeah, but they've just got to win now, Arsenal. Are they? And then, and then the next question that never gets asked of them, but it should be, do you think Arsenal are the favourites to win it? No, I think Liverpool and City are favourites ahead of them. <laughs> then how do they have to win it if you see them as third favourites? I've never seen in any other sport you get the person that's third or fourth favourite to win Wimbledon. Nobody says he has to win it. Is in that year, unless it's he's uh, he's getting old and it's his last year. It's not as if this Arsenal team is on its last legs. You never, you know, no one ever lined up for the hundred meter sprint when you had Usain Bolt running and went. Do you know what? If Dwayne Chambers don't win, uh, Dwayne Chambers has got to win it today. He's seventh favorite, but he's got to win it today. No one's ever done that. But suddenly, with Arsenal, it's if they don't win this year, and it's a way of deflecting from you guys being a better team and that you've become competitors. They want to play down that being a competitor isn't where we all want to be. And then from that point, you become winners to make you, it. It's almost like they're trying to gaslight Arsenal fans into thinking if you come second and narrowly miss out on the title to city, that's a worse season than Spurs coming fifth. It's honestly crazy. The way I see again, and it's two games running where so many media outlets, so many rivals are not talking about, how quick the football was, how beautiful the football was, how how you controlled the games really in both matches and how that's a dangerous thing. It's just over-celebrating and yeah, but City are going to win the league anyway or moving the goalposts even further to essentially saying if you don't win the league this year, everything you're currently doing means nothing, which is just nonsense. It's, it's not is, how Terry, football works. The thing is, bro, this is good for Arsenal because we're relevant again. We're relevant again. We're rattling people. No one wants to see us up there, man. Everyone hates it. They absolutely hate the fact that Arsenal are up there again because we were the laughing stock. Man United, we were basically what Man United and Chelsea have been. That was us for a good few years, man. Coming eighth and eighth and then bottling top four and coming fifth and then bottling the top. We're actually there competing again now and everyone's like, I hate this. I thought they were coming fourth. Champions League, they're back in it for the first time. They should be fifth. What the hell are they up there for? No one, everyone hates it. They can't act. I don't know why. I mean, just support your own club. It's calm. But some people, they just hate Arsenal. They can't stand us. And that's why they hate the fact that we're up there. And you've got Gary Neville one week. Just calm down. What an emotional fan base. What an emotional team. What the hell is going on? A week later, 6-0. They've got a real chance, you know, Arsenal. They've got a real chance. What, in seven days, we've gone from stop being emotional to actually you've got a real chance. I just, I don't, I don't, they're all over the place with Arsenal. Everyone's yeah, I, can, can, yeah, I, you know, Listen, I'll criticise Gary Neville, you know, as quickly as I can, but... He, he, can he not be right on both of those points? I think you do have an emotional team. I think you have an emotional manager. You have an emotional fan base, but you also still have a chance of winning the league. Why? Why can't? Why can't both of those things be right? Both of them things are right, Ailby, but he's not saying it in that context, is he? Do you see what, what I'm was saying? He saying? So, so one, I, minute, I don't know that. I don't know the clips that you're talking about. So I'm just yeah. yeah. So one minute he's this is such an emotional side. They're gonna they're gonna throw this away. This is this is not nothing to get excited about yet. Next minute, got a chance. What well, one is it then? Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know he said yeah. that at the end of the first because yeah. you didn't say that the first time. Yeah, yeah, I thought, yeah. I thought, because you do have an emotional, yeah, you do have an emotional. We have, we have an unbelievably emotional fan base and team. Correct. Yeah. That is a fact. That's not just opinion. That for me is a fact. I think we've mm. proven that, right? But we've always had a chance of winning the league. I mean, that, that in my opinion, anyway, I, I never thought we were going to win it. We definitely got a chance of winning it. You know, what I mean, look at the look at the table. It doesn't lie, does it? You know what I mean? There's 24 games gone. And we're two points off the top. That means we've got a chance to win the league. Now, if we do want to win it, we've got to be printing run flawless, in my opinion, towards the end of this, uh, to now and the end of the season. But I honestly believe that Man City got too much. And I've always said that. I'm not going to change my opinion of that. But I don't know, man. I just find the media a very, very strange bunch. Anytime it's Arsenal, it's pile on us. And I find it bizarre. And I honestly believe it is because there are a certain section of our fan base that people cannot stand and they find a nuisance. But let's be real. Your fan bases have it as well, but people never want to talk on it for some reason. There's a there's a very arrogant side of the Man City fans. There's a very a very annoying Man United bunch, annoying Liverpool, annoying Spurs, West Ham, all of them deluded. Oh my God, Tottenham are going to Tottenham ain't won nothing, mate. They ain't won nothing for ages. But their fan base will shout and they'll come on here and say, "Oh, this is brilliant, and we're going to win trophies this year." Mm -hmm. And that is the next best thing. And Andrew's already not won a trophy. Do you know what I mean? So it, it, it's it, they're annoying as well. But we don't pile in on them and start going mad whenever this happens. Get the mm -hmm. hump, get rattled by it. It's very very but, odd. I don't know. But, the, the, the thing is, so Jamie Carragher did a really good breakdown last night of Bayer Leverkusen and Alonso. But at no point did he mention how after they beat Bayern Munich 3-0, which is, is is a huge game. And, it, you know, by the way, you, Arsenal have beaten both Liverpool and City this year in, in big games that are going to have imp implications on the title race. He didn't, he didn't, he doesn't jump and celebrate like Arteta does. But at the end of the game, 
the players basically did a lap of honour and went around clapping the fans. Now, typically speaking, that is what you do at the end of the season and when you win a trophy. But yet Jamie Carragher completely left that out of his analysis because he was bigging up how this guy could be good for Liverpool. What he didn't bring up is, well, he's over-celebrating there at the end of the games. Is that immaturity? Could that immaturity damage Liverpool? And that, for me, is where I have a problem with the analysis. Is they're inconsistent with it? I don't mind that somebody's opinion that if you over-celebrate, it can damage a team. But you've got to apply that logic when you're talking about multiple clubs and not just one yeah, in isolation. Fact. And I spoke about it back because I did a video earlier on today when it comes to Man United. We get similar treatment. We're just not as good. And Man United fans are only going to notice what Arsenal fans are say saying if and when we get back up near the top. Two weeks ago, Simon Jordan saying Man United fans stop moaning. It should all be about results now between now and the end of the season. He then gets called out by a United fan who says, are oh, you still slagging my manager off after three wins on the bounce? And all Simon Jordan responded with was, well, where you, where you actually sit as a football club in the pyramid your performances aren't sustainable. Two, three weeks ago, it was just results that you wanted to, 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 to talk about. Now suddenly results are not the important bit and it's performances. And none of what he actually says in isolation, like the pundits, is wrong. But it's their application of that, of that opinion and how they speak about other clubs and they ignore those same talking points. That for me is where, especially from the paid pundits who get listened to by millions, millions of people listen to it they're influential and i think it's kind of wrong like arsenal are not the only team who go crazy when they score goals they don't have the only manager that runs up and down and screams on the touchline they don't have the only team that afterwards jump on each other and celebrate so i, I don't understand why it's been called out other than what you've said there is there is a disdain for arsenal and and barring city fans city are the only fans that generally speak and i exclude unless you're hamza who all other rivals are so rattled by arsenal that are Weird, genuinely man. rattled by Arsenal. It is, it's hilarious to watch. Well, Just, that's why I asked at the start of this debate, tell me about what are people getting rattled about? Because I don't know what people yeah, are getting rattled about. It's because LB, LB, you're not one of them, bro. So that's what it is. You're not one of them getting rattled, so you won't understand it. You're like us. You're sitting there going, what? Scratching your head. Why are they? They absolutely hate it. And, you know, let's be real. What we really should be talking about is Declan Rice and the actual performance and how good it was, right? But, I, I, but we're all talking about this again because people absolutely cannot stand the fact that Arsenal won. And they can't fat stand the fact that Arsenal won 6-0. It's just bizarre for me. It really is strange. But listen, maybe we're more serious than than, than, I, than I thought. Maybe fans believe that we're more serious than even I thought because it, it is absolutely crazy. I, but I want to 